So we live in an interesting time, don't we? Yes. How many of you are watching the news? It is crazy out there, isn't it? If you are watching the political parties, it's kind of funny. Just one side is accusing the other side of forcefully, uh, what, what, how would we say, Qu quick pro quo, right? And then we have on the other, the, the other side that's complaining about that side, there's a video of their person who this is involved with doing exactly, and who admitted that when he was in office, he did that. So who's right? I've called this one, Here Comes the Judge. Because you have to understand, the only thing that happens, the only people that get anything out of this are lawyers. <laughs> happens to be one of them is my brother, but hey, that's another story, right? <laughs> but what's so interesting is when you, when you think about this and in the day that we live in, and the God that we serve. There's going to be a day when we're going to go before that throne. And there's going to be two lawyers. One is named Satan. And I hate to tell you, he's pretty darn good. He knows the law. He, he knows you real well. In fact, he's probably tempted you a couple times without you even knowing it. And then there's another jet lawyer. And this lawyer loses a lot of cases, I'm going to be honest with you, because his clients are guilty. But he's a special kind of lawyer. You know, it's interesting. It reminds me of one of the first times Judy and I, after I became a believer, went to Israel. And it was just getting ready. We had gone about a couple of weeks before this time of year. And on Shabbat, we went and visited the traditional synagogue in Jerusalem. It's called the Great Synagogue. And Judy, I have to tell you, was traumatized from it. So in the Great Synagogue, they have areas for men to sit down below, and the women have to sit upstairs with the kids. Right? Very fair, huh? And Judy was gracious, and the other ladies, they, they went upstairs and sat down. And a lady came up to Judy while she was sitting there and said, You're in my seat. And made her move. <laughs> Judy's like, I didn't know her name was on the seat. But while we were sitting, while the men of us were sitting down in the bottom area, unlike here, you know, when we come in, we sit, we, we listen, people were talking to each other. Matter of fact, People were getting up and walking and talking to other people while the service was going on. Blew me away. And one guy walked up to the guy that was sitting in a row in front of me and looked at him and said, So, do you need a lawyer for Yom Kippur? And that hit me. Think about what he was saying. Do you need someone to go before God for you on your behalf? Because in reality, you know you're guilty, right? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands on this next question. But if you have ever, I know most of you never, this would never happen to you, but if you were ever, ever, ever pulled over by the police and you had to roll down that window, and the police officer comes up, and what's the first question they ask? All right, so obviously some of you have been pulled over before. So that was a trick way. That was my way of getting it, right? Do you know why I pulled you over? If your answer is because you like my car, you're probably going to get a ticket, right? But what is he asking you? He's asking you, do you know what law you broke? And the answer always is, well, probably speeding, right? And what we see here and what we have to understand is we all fall short of the glory of God. 
And we need a great lawyer. But even the best lawyer can't beat Satan on this one. But see, our lawyer is a special lawyer. See, our lawyer can do something that no other lawyer on earth can do. See, when we go before that judge and the Satan pulls out, some, for some of you it will be a very long scroll, for others <laughs> might be shorter. You know who you are. <laughs> and Satan starts calling off all the sins that you did. Maybe he had her hand write a couple in because on the way in you were, you were blowing your horn at the people in front of you, right? And he's going to rape. He'll even have witnesses. You guys are in trouble. But your lawyer has the best defense. See, when that judge, remember that old uh, comedian, he'll come the judge. Here come the kids are going, what is he talking about? What was his, that wasn't Flip Wilson, was it? Who? I could not remember his name. But I remember, here come the judge. Here come the judge, right? You did not want to hear that. But when that judge is sitting there on his throne, you know what your lawyer is going to say when he starts reading off all the things you've done? He's going to say, Your Honor, Satan is absolutely right. But all those have been wiped away. Those no longer exist. And as Satan gets ready to object, ready to show that scroll to the judge, he's going to take another look down there and he's going to see a blank sheet of paper. Because, see, your judge, your, your lawyer, can do something no other lawyer can do wipe away your sins. This whole feast, this whole time of remembrance, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is such a vital time in our lives. As many of you know, this is my spiritual birthday. I mentioned that. On Yom Kippur, God dealt with me. See, I knew I was a sinner. Not as bad as some of y'all. But I was pretty bad. I had a foul mouth. Man, every other word out of my mouth was a cuss word. And one of my favorite cuss words was Jesus Christ. See, for a Jewish person, that was a cuss word. Because we, you know, we, it wasn't, we weren't praising him when we were saying it. But see, God took me and changed me. He spoke to me this evening and said, I've shown you my signs. Believe in me. And see, that's really all it takes. I had already started reading the Bible on my own. Never read the New Testament. I was just reading the Old Testament. But see, every prophecy about the Messiah, the one who is going to atone for my sins, because that lamb could no longer be sacrificed. That temple is no longer standing. And God had to give us another way. And that's what made the difference for me. Understanding what God was ready to do in my life, to change me. You know, as we read and we talk about this feast, three books are mentioned. The book of life, the book of death, and the Lamb's book of life. Why the Lamb's book? I never understood that. Going to the temple on Peachtree Street, we used to enjoy going there. You know why we liked going to the one on Peachtree Street? The, have you always seen that it's called the temple, right? It's actually supposed to be designed in the way the temple looks. If you look at the temple, it really doesn't, but we're not going to go there. 
But one of the neatest things growing up as a kid that I used to love going to the temple there, especially on the high holy days. We'd always like to go to the early service because when we're coming out, channel 2, 5, and 11 were there to film us. Look, the Jews coming out of their service. Right? It was a big news on the news, right? Y'all, and and, and we, would, we would look to see, did they get us? There I am, right? We would rush home to see if we made it on the news. We were famous. No other synagogue had that opportunity. But what was missing there was the truth. The rabbi I had, Rabbi Sugarman, Alvin Sugarman, he was a good Democrat. I was a good Republican. Neither the two shall meet. All he did is preach about the politics. I didn't like that. I wanted to hear the word. But one thing I learned from him is I realized that there had to be something more. And when I started reading the word, it came alive. And God showed me his truth. See, we all are going to be, if we have to go, especially, can you imagine having to go before God without a lawyer? Lord, help us. Even if you're a lawyer, because I know we've got a couple in here. Right? A lawyer will tell you, you never defend yourself, right? Only a fool depends, that's right. So if you think you're good enough to go against the devil, think again. But see, your lawyer that you hired, here's the neat thing. He's free. And he's really good friends with the judge. They're like this. But when you're found guilty, and you will be found guilty, right? Unless he's your lawyer. Because again, when Satan goes to show the the judge, it's wiped away. Your sins are no more. See, we have a problem with human beings. We like to remember things. God doesn't. God likes to forget your past. God's not worried about what you did when you were 15. Say that again. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Because it's wiped away. You're a new creature in him. And that's what makes us special. Yeah, I still remember that day that I accepted the Lord. We had come late to service. We were in, the very, they were in metal chairs. They, even have, they were in metal chairs. They were uncomfortable. Both my brothers and, and their wives were there and Judy was there. And two miracles took place that day. One is that I accepted the Lord. And the second that Jay was speechless. (laughs) If you know my brother, you'll get that one. Right? But as God, as I was sitting there and the rabbi was giving that altar call. The devil tried to still get me. See, he's going to try to hold on to you to the very end. He said, you don't need this. You're Jewish. You'll be saved. See, he likes to lie to us too, doesn't he? See, he might know the word of God better than you do, but he also knows how to lie. Then I hear the, the still small voice say, I've shown you my signs. Now believe in me. And that's when the scales literally came off my eyes. The scripture talks about the Jewish people have scales on their eye covering themselves from seeing the truth. As I started walking down that aisle, I used to be a pro-choice. If a woman wanted to have an abortion, I thought, go ahead. And as I was walking down that aisle, God spoke to me and said, I knew the number of hairs on your head before you were born. Now, here's one thing that maybe a lot of you don't know. 
I'm an abortion child. Now, how do, can I be an abortion child? I'm here, right? See, back in the 60s, my mom didn't know she was pregnant with me. In fact, she went to the doctor and they told her she had a spastic colon. And they told her that if she had me, that she would have to go on kidney dialysis. And back then, you couldn't go to a, a, a shopping center and get it. It was very difficult back then. And she could have had a legal abortion. And she decided not to do that. She decided to take the risk. The amazing thing was that God healed her of her disease. And I thank God that they did not name me after that disease. They could have just called me Little Spaz. Right? Two years, shortly after I became a believer, my mom developed ovarian cancer. And she started battling it. And she, was a, she was a five foot two woman who was strong as an ox. You didn't mess with my mom. I remember stories of my mom. When my mom said no, it was no, you didn't ask anything else. She might have been five foot two, but we didn't mess with her. I remember one day she came home and told us a story. So we owned our own business. My mom was in one of the stores, and a lady had an issue with her, and she called her a, my mom a dirty Jew. That's like the N-word. We don't do that. The lady walked out of the store. My mom walked down after her. And according to the restaurant, the, the shop that was next door to her, my mom confronted the lady again. The lady said it a second time. My mom took the lady's handbag and smacked her with it. They called her Rocky after that. But God did something to her. Two years later, on Yom Kippur, she accepted the Lord. And she was no longer afraid. It was amazing. Matter of fact, she told my brothers and I that the one thing she hated the most is she couldn't learn more in the time that she had. But see, my mom did something that no one else could have done. She told the two people that were going to do her funeral what she wanted said there. And they shared about the good news. And most of her friends were not believers. They were Jewish, but not believers. And I remember after when we were sitting Shiva for my mom, Friends and relatives started pulling the brothers aside one by one and bringing us into different rooms and started to ask us about what my mom believed. Even in her death, she was able to witness the people that we could never share. But she wasn't afraid. That was the amazing thing. I was telling you about my friend this morning, Barry, who is not looking well right now. And I went to go see him today. And you know what? He's not afraid. Sure, he hopes that God will heal him and make a miracle take place. But if not, he's ready. Because he knows where he's going. Because he knows that Yeshua has already wiped away his past. And if, if and when he does pass, if it's soon, he knows that he's going to be in the pearly hates in, in, in heaven. When Paul sees him at the gate, he's going to welcome him in. And that's important. You know, I like to say you've seen signs, God is my co-pilot. 
then he's in the wrong seat. God doesn't need to be your co-pilot. He needs to be the pilot. You need to be the co-pilot. God is opening up the book, the most important book, the Lamb's Book of Life. See, that book deals with your eternity. It's probably digitized now, I'm assuming. Don't quote me on that. But when you get to heaven, they're going to pull it up. And the question is simple. Is your name going to be there? Here's the neat thing. Someone said they hope and pray. You don't need a hope or pray. All you need to do is believe. See, if you believe that Yeshua is your Messiah, you have the best lawyer you could have. Better than my brother. And he's a pretty darn good lawyer. Because your sins are no longer. They're wiped away. You know, I mentioned before that men, we as humans like to remember the past. How many of you spouses there have been in an argument with your spouse and all of a sudden they brought up something from 15 years ago? <laughs> right? That you have forgotten. You forgot 14 years ago, nine months, and eight days ago, right? See, that's not fair. <laughs> and be glad that God's not like that. I see that pointing. <laughs> I would have done that. <laughs> right? But see, God doesn't work that way. God forgets our past. God's worried about your future. What are you going to do? We have a new year. We have new challenges. You know what? Our society's in trouble. We have a battle going on like never before. And I'll tell you when it started. The day they took prayer out of school. It's, it's that easy. When we start letting the ACLU tell us what to do and how to live and how we call people and do things, it's scary. We need a change. We need to get back to God. God's word is true, right? He makes it real simple. All we have to do is have that faith. You can say that a grain of a mustard. That's he said, you know, a grain of a mustard. If your faith is a small, how many of you ever seen a grain of a mustard seed? You better have good eyes. It is really, really small. If your faith is that little, you can move mountains, it says. And we've moved mountains in our lives, haven't we? God is still in the miracle business today. And he's calling us. So do you have that lawyer's card in your pocket? Do you need a lawyer? The answer is yes. But not just a lawyer. You need the lawyer. You need the one who can wipe away your sins. And all you have to do is do what I did on this day. Is say yes to him. Remember I said I heard that still small voice and said I've shown you my signs now. Believe in me. That's all it took. God started changing me as I was walking down the aisle. He says, I'll make you a new creature. I'll never forget about a week or so later. I looked over at Judy and said, I'm not cussing anymore. I didn't do anything about it. I didn't change anything. God did. I didn't even think about it. Now when I hear words like that, man, it just, it, it's like, it's like, remember the movie Jaws and the scrapes, the boy, you see, I don't have to go any farther, right? That's what it does to me now. 
And yet I used to be like that. That's about as bad as I get, guys. I'm sorry. Didn't do drugs. Never smoked. Okay, drank a little, but let's not go there. But God can change us. God can make us who we are today. And that's what's so special about it. We have a friend who's a judge. You know, I'm going to tell a little story on me. I had a situation where I had a little car accident. I don't think it was my fault. I still debate it. There was so little day, a, a tractor trailer came into my lane, but we're not going there. The police officer said that I was in the wrong, even though I was in my lane, but it's okay. And I remember going up in front of me. You had, you know, nowadays, it used to be in the past, you could just pay your ticket online. Now they're making you come to the court. You know why they're doing that? They get more fees that way. And so when I got there and they started calling up, they first had you go and talk to this prosecutor. And you could plead your case before him. And maybe he'd be lenient and give you a lesser fine or lesser thing. And I shared with him my story, and I think he kind of believed it. He said, I'll tell you what. If you pay the fine and you go to a defensive driving school, we won't put any points on your record. And you know what? If not, I had to come back in front of another judge. I was like, it's not worth it. So I said, okay, even though, again, I felt I was in the right, but it's okay. And when the judge started calling the names up, he called my name up, and he said my name perfectly. And that got me interested. Because my name, if you look at it, it's kind of tough, isn't it? I get called everything, right? <laughs> Skew low. No one, can, no one can pronounce it. And as I'm walking up, the judge says, I wonder if, and I already knew what he was going to say. My answer was, yes, Your Honor. He was wondering if, my, if I was related to Jay. Sometimes it's good to have a brother who's a famous lawyer. And the judge said, your brother was one of my teachers in school. I'm like, in, I, I didn't do this in public, but I went, yes. <laughs> and he looked at the thing and did his gavel and said, you need to pay the fine and you can leave. And I remembered all the other ones. He said you had to pay the fine and go to the class. And then after the class is done, then they'll take it off. And so I actually didn't believe what I heard. So I had to ask the, the bailiff. I said, I think he just said all I had to do was pay the fine. And he said, oh, no, that's not right. There's no way. And we went back up. And he, they looked and he said, nope, that's all he has to do. See, it was nice. I'm thinking, well, man, that was cool. Sometimes it's good to have a famous brother, right? But I was still guilty. See, my brother could have gotten me a little bit off, the, off of what I had to do. But if Yeshua was there with me, I would be a free bird. And that's what it's about. Understanding what God can do for us. So I want to encourage you, those watching online and you here today, man, you can have a spiritual birthday like I did. Did it change my life? Absolutely. Am I a better person? Absolutely. Ask Judy. If you don't believe me, ask her. But I want to give you that same opportunity. Because it's not about keeping all the commandments about following him and when we follow him we'll want to keep all the commandments we'll want to do what God has instructed us to do because he loves us and that's what it's about so I want everyone to bow your head and close your eyes I want to ask you out right now those here those watching online maybe you're watching later on 
If you've never accepted Yeshua into your heart, doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Gentile, he came for everybody. And you're ready to say yes to him. If you're ready to become that new creature, to forget about your past, all you need to do is raise your hand and we'll say a simple prayer with you. If you're watching online, you can contact us on the information you see on the screen or wherever you are. We will contact you and pray with you with that prayer. But if you're here right now, you have that opportunity. He's knocking at your door. Are you going to let him in? Is there anyone? Anyone at all? I see that hand. I see both those hands. Amen. If you all will please rise. And the scripture says that we cannot be ashamed of the decision we made. So as we get ready for the two young ladies who raised their hand, and maybe you couldn't raise your hand, but you're ready to say it. You can say it with us. If you're a believer, I want you to say it with them in support. Repeat after me. Abba, Father. I have sinned against you. Lord, I believe your son Yeshua died and rose again. And is sitting at your right hand. And because he lives today, I can live. Thank you, Lord, for making me a new creature. I ask this in your son Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 The Lord says, give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. The scripture tells us we cannot be ashamed of the decision we just made. Yeshua said, how can I profess you before God in heaven if you cannot profess me before man on earth? So the two young ladies who just raised their hand and anyone else, if you just come forward right now and just shake my hand. Amen. 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 Can you shake my hand? Amen. Amen. She, she told me last Shabbat that she's been wanting to do it, but she was too afraid to come forward. So I'm glad you made that decision today. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As you are, give the Lord one more hand. Give a, it says the angels in heaven are rejoicing today. Amen.